What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we're going to begin unit testing Web API. And if you haven't watched any of my other videos, um, what I do in these unit testing videos is I just go clone the repository from previous projects that I make and write unit tests for them. So I'll leave a link down below in clone this Pokemon review API. You don't even have to get it running. Don't worry about setting up the database. You can if you want to. I mean, if you really want to hook it up, you just got to hook up the database, but that's really it. But we're not going to be doing anything with the database. So feel free to just clone it and we'll begin writing unit tests immediately and you don't have to do anything um, to actually hook it up. But make sure that you clone the review API because that's what I'm going to be using. So we're going to be adding here. Let me just go in here. Uh, we're going to go add. We're going to go new project. Then we're going to add a X unit test project. Simple enough. And we're going to call this Pokemon Review App. Uh, let me see. Yeah, Pokemon Review App. I'm actually just going to copy this. This is kind of long, so I'm just going to copy this up here. And by popular naming convention, we're just going to add a test at the end of it so that it has Pokemon Review App dot test. Okay, then we are going to be using dot net six as the framework. Pretty yeah, that, I'm almost positive that's what I used. It's been so long. It's been so so long since I've even like fired up this project. I've it's been literally months since I've looked at this project. So everything seems to be running. And before we actually start writing any unit test, go ahead in here and let's make sure that the test ru uh, runner is actually working. So we're gonna go here. We're gonna go run all test, and one test succeeded, and that is the green light for this one they give you they always give you that just that one test and we'll actually just leave that one there i don't think it's really hurting anything and it's kind of good because it tells us that the test explorer is actually finding our test then after that we're going to we've already brought in x unit we've already got most of what we need but we actually need uh two other things we're going to need fake it easy because that's the mocking framework that i'm going to be using and i'm also going to be using uh, fluent assertions. Uh, many people fake it easy actually. Mock is definitely the most famous, but fake it easy. I'm telling you is just it's like I call it like the iPhone of mocking frameworks. It's just easy. It works. There's a lot of magic, but in this case, magic is good because sometimes when magic just works and it always works, magic is good, and that's what I like about fake it easy. There's a lot of magic, but Sometimes magic can be a beautiful thing. <laughs> okay, I'm being a goofball. Okay, so next we're gonna need fluent assertions. You don't even need, you, you really don't even need fluent assertions. Fluent assertions is a nicety. Fake it easy is, you have to have fake it easy. You have to have X units. Maybe you don't, but fluent assertions is totally like, you don't even need it, but it is just nice to have. Um, so here, trying to think I don't think there's anything else that we really need I'm just gonna actually close out of all this and close all tabs then I'm go let's go ahead in here and like let's start actually looking at our controllers great and the one that I'm actually gonna be testing let's actually test the Pokemon controller and let's go in here and begin let's make a folder and just by naming convention you make a folder for each like controller and data that you have and we're just going to call this controller then we're going to go in here we're going to go add we're going to go new item and we're just going to call this pokemon controller test and that's going to be good enough okay and you always, when you're unit testing, I'm assuming if you're a software developer, you have dual screens. You don't, you don't have to have dual screens. It's not, uh, you don't, you don't have to, but it is nice to be able to have your, this code, your actual real code, quote unquote, real code in your, uh, right. And then you actually have the test on the left so you can kind of build them as you go. And 
just like an MVC, this is actually very similar to MVC. You want to start bringing in your dependencies. And the, the way that you do that is you simply just create a constructor for uh, these dependencies. And I'm just going to go CTOR, bring in that controller test. And I'm going to just start bringing in dependencies one by one. So we're going to go Pokemon. repositories and if this is um, confusing this is what's called mocking and mocking is essentially we do mocking for two reasons and I talked about like I've this is like probably my third time explaining this so if you don't know if you want more in-depth information on this check out my mocking explain video and I go into more in-depth on why we're we actually mock so first thing is that we need all of in order for this controller to actually be able to work, we have to have these dependencies in here. And another reason that we mock is because we need consistency within our code. And what I mean by that is if we go in here and we actually go into, you know, quote unquote, go into one of our repositories and that code executes and hits the database, then it's not really even unit testing. It's actually integration testing. Essentially, what uh, what I'm doing and what I'm mocking is that we're going to be mocking these functions inside of our um, inside of our controllers. We're we're literally just going to be mocking everything, and instead of this actually returning you know map or map, what it's going to do is it's going to fake or mock this and once it actually hits this function, it's going to return, uh, fake it easy is just gonna be, you know, blow that away and it's going to return a uh, fake Pokemon DTO. And if you don't know what that means, um, if that's a little confusing to you, I will talk more about it and we'll kind of go more in depth as, you know, we go, but for right now, just kind of follow along. So we're gonna go Pokemon repository. We're gonna go just like that. Then we're gonna bring in this and I forgot to tell you guys, if you're using a prior version of Visual Studio, if you're using 2022, this is going to give you this option to add this reference for you, and it's just gonna handle everything for you. But if you're not, and if you're on a newer version, what you wanna do is you want to go into your Pokemon review app, you wanna go add, you want to go to project reference, and you want to add it right here. You see it, it, are, it did everything for me, but if you're not in that, you know, scenario, whatever, you want to um, click that check button, okay? And super easy. All right, so next thing that we wanna do is when we're mocking these repositories, in theory, we could just go through and literally copy and paste this into every single unit test, but that's gonna become so redundant and so annoying that it's better just to put them up in the constructor or uh, provide them with dependency injection, which is kind of another reason why we use dependency injection really. And another reason that we use dependency injection is you guessed it, it's really easy to write unit tests with them. If we don't have dependency injection, unit tests become a bitch. <laughs> and I just got demonetized. Wonderful. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm pro they probably won't demonetize me. Anyway, if for say for getting my video demonetized i deserve a like so go ahead leave a like down below if you so choose okay so <laughs> all right we're going down here we're going to bring in the mapper and i'm going to show you guys how to mock uh imapper and imapper kind of a pain but not really it's not really that big of a pain so and i named that repository so we mock that now we need to uh, bring in our review. So review repository is equal to a dot fake. So got that. We're gonna bring in mapper. We're gonna fake the mapper. And we actually need to fake the eye mapper. We want to fake the interface because that is good coding convention. I guess we could just fake the regular mapper, but let's fake the eye mapper. 
That makes way more sense. Then, now we're pretty much good to go. So we're going to fake, let's go ahead and go down to our get Pokemons. So this will be the first actual uh, controller that we're gonna fake. And the way that uh, we always, you know, do all of these things is first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna, we're gonna bring in a fact. You don't, if you don't know what a fact is, a fact is literally just a, the most simple. I don't even know why they call it a fact. They should just call it a test, but they call it a fact for some reason. And a theory is, once again, I have no idea why they call it a theory, but a theory is the same exact thing, but you can use inline data. And you can even see that the IntelliSense picked it up because whenever you use a theory, you always use inline data. And why they call it that, I have no clue. All right, so then we're gonna go in here, and of course, it's gonna be void because test, from what I know, have never returned anything. And we're, okay, so the way that you write a unit test name, and there's different ways to go about this, you have your class, you have your method, and then you have the expected result. So in our case, our class is the Pokemon controller, and our method is create Pokemons. or uh, get Pokemons. I'm sorry. And our expected result is return success. Or I think a better one would be return okay. I think that's a more appropriate because we want it to return, uh, since it's web API, we were expecting it to return um, like web API -y things. <laughs> this is a totally terrible way to describe it, but you know what I mean. All right, so we're gonna have, first thing, all right, so in every single unit test, in every place that you work is gonna be different, but you want to arrange, you always want to put this or you want to put regions, and regions are pretty much commons, but they're collapsible, arrange, we want to act, and assert. And if any of this is confusing you, you may want to watch my very first video on like what all of this means. So if this is any of this is confusing to you, if mocking is confusing to you, I have like a baby steps video on, you know, all of these concepts. So make sure to check that out if you're having trouble. So we're going to so the first thing that we want to fake is we want to we're going to fake our pokemons. And what you really want to do is you just kind of you just kind of got to look at it. It's it's uh, kind of strange to think, you know, what I'm going to mock and what I'm not going to mock. Since we're not actually going, we're not, we don't want to return a bad requ request. We want this test to succeed and then our expected result, we want to return an okay. And we have to think, you know, all the stuff that we're actually returning. So we're definitely returning a list of Pokemon and we're, gonna, we're definitely going to have to mock that. But we also have to return um, a, when this, we're going to have to f uh, fake this mapper and we're going to have to return this eye collection of Pokemon. Since this repository, we don't even need to worry about what's going on inside this repository because we don't want to worry. That's not the, the point is, is that we don't want the, this code inside here to execute. We want it to be mocked. We want fake data. We want this, when this program steps through and it executes this, fake it easy is gonna take over and it's going to, instead of actually execute, it's going to fake this and you will uh, not have to worry about your repository. So the first thing that we're gonna have to arrange is we're gonna have to bring back a collection of Pokemon DTOs. And something's not right in Hooterville. I don't know what's going on with this thing. So, um, whoa, all right. Pokemon DTO, and we're returning the Pokemon DTOs. Okay, great. And because that's faked, the next thing that we can do is, since we need, we also need some Pokemon list too. So we're gonna have Pokemon list a.fake that we're gonna have a list of Pokemon DTOs. Then we're also going to have to fake the mapper. And mapper really isn't that difficult to fake. So 
whenever you're thinking about like what should I fake or what should I not fake, really the whole goal is is that whenever you see stuff going into repositories or whenever you see stuff uh, going into functions or private functions. Actually, I don't think you need to mock private function. It's been a while since I've mocked a private function, but whenever you're mocking something that's coming in from a repository, like this is coming in from a repository, this is coming in from iMapper, you have to mock stuff like this. Like Stuff like this has to be mocked, and that's kind of how, and a lot of times you don't really even know, and it really just comes down to sitting there with the debugger and just going through it and being like, is this returning? Is this returning? Is this, re is this one returning? And then whatever is not returning, you have to go in there and start injecting value so that it can actually run. And I'll show you what I mean here in a second, if that's confusing to you. And then we need to, so the way that you actually mock is you go in here and we're gonna, we're gonna mop, mock that mapper. So go in here, we're gonna go map, and we're gonna have a list of Pokemon DTOs. We're gonna pass in the Pokemons into our, uh, where it's actually being mocked, and it's a fake. And then we're going to have it returns, it's gonna say returns, and then it's going to return the Pokemon list. And if that, make, if that doesn't make sense to you, let me just explain it. So what's gonna happen? And we haven't even got to the point where we're actually running the function yet. Actually, um, let me just do a couple more things, and I'll go back and explain it. Because if I don't, if I don't finish this, you won't. You probably won't understand what I'm talking about. Okay. So we're gonna bring. Then now we actually have to bring in our Pokemon controller. Like we actually have to, in order for this code, this. It's a kind of weird. It's another weird concept too that you have to bring in a controller. Because you usually never knew up a controller. Like you never knew up a controller unless you're in a unit test. So in order for us to be even able to new this up, we're going to have to pass in these repositories that we faked. So we'll go in here, we'll go to Pokemon repository, we'll go to review repository, and then we'll pass in mapper. And now we can finally new new this thing up so that we can actually run it because we can't um, we can't actually have this in here unless we have those de de uh, uh, dependencies so we'll go here and then we're gonna go controller dot get pokemons and this is what is actually acting this is actually where the code where this uh, function that we're testing is actually going to be executed and then we're going to do our actual Assertions, which are pretty much like really where you're actually doing the test. So we go to here, we're gonna go fluent assertions, and at least at the very start, this should not be null. Like, let's just kind of get this thing running, and I'll show you guys a lot of what I'm talking about with the debugger. So go ahead, put that debugger there, and let's go in and let's debug this, and like, let's actually see what's going on, and I'll kind of explain things step by step. So we're going down, let's go down. We've got our Pokemons. If you hover over this, you'll know, it's kind of peculiar. Like it's so strange, like you just see faked and then you have like all of these faked objects. And it's kind of, it's kind of cool, it's interesting. So then you have this, so you have Pokemon list and it's a fake, it's pretty much a fake list of Pokemon. Then we have here and this is, this a.call2 is actually doing the real mocking. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna have this so that when this executes, this actual mapper executes, when this is passed into here, it will have fake, um, like a fake mapper that it can actually have. And let me just show you. So we go down here, we've got our faked mapper, and goes down. Now it actually create. Now the controller is actually created. Our Pokemon controller is actually created, and if you look at it, we got all this cool little stuff in here that we can actually test. Otherwise, we wouldn't have that. So, what's going to happen now is we've got all the stuff that we need for this test. We've gotten uh, all of our dependencies, and now we can actually run this thing. 
So what's going to happen is when this steps over, it's actually going to return this. And the reason that it returns this is because of this mock and this little function that we put here. So it's going to go here, it's going to go down, and it's actually going to return. And if you look at it, we actually get like a real result. Like there was no actual thing hitting this, but we've actually got a real result here that we can test. We got status code 200, we've got content type, we've got values. And it's difficult to test stuff like this because it doesn't really even have any values and doesn't really even have anything in there. So the best way to test a web API, web API controller is to uh, check for the OK object result. And this is for, for a very simple controller test like we have here. Now, a more complex API, you're gonna have all types of stuff, but as you got, you know, in your situation, now you will have the tools in order to actually be able to write your own assertions. Like 90% of what makes testing so difficult is getting all your dependencies running and figuring out just like what's going on. And now that you guys have a good understanding of what actually, you know, how to get these things up and running, the assertions are gonna be nothing. So we're gonna go in here. Let's go ahead and run this test. Let's we'll see if it works. We'll go to our run all test. Make sure our test explorer is up. And our test passed. Boom! We are test masters. So next thing we want to do, I think a, a good, um, we'll test a really hard one. We'll test a uh, um, create. We're going to test the create Pokemon. This is going to be like Bowser or whatever, like the final boss <laughs> of the test. So what, as always, we've got all of our, like this is going to be a lot easier because we actually have all of our repositories. So we're going to go in here and we're going to go down. Then we're going to uh, create our test. So Pokemon controller. And then we have create Pokemon. And for now, I'm just going to return action result. Like we're just gonna say, hey, this test is expected to return an action result. And we can or I don't know. Let's do let's do okay. Let's be a little adventurous and let's actually make sure that this thing is returning okay. So here, whenever you have um, we could do inline theory, but I'm just gonna go in here and I'm gonna mock this Pokemon DTO, I'm gonna mock this category ID, and I'm gonna mock this owner ID. And I know that there's differences between them, but I don't, to be honest with you, I really don't know the difference between a fake, and I, I really don't expect anybody else to either. Like, you can do most of this stuff and not realize like the difference between a fake and a mock and you know, what all that stuff is. So, we're gonna create a fake Pokemon DTO. Then we're going to go down here and we're going to fake our Pokemon list. And once again, we're going to go arrange. We're going to go act. Then we're going to assert in here. So most of our stuff. Uh, so we're going to have our Pokemons. It's going to be a dot fake. And we're going to be returning a I collection. So here, then let me see. That's pretty much it. Then we're gonna have our Pokemon list a dot fake. You know Pokemon DTO. Then we're gonna a call two. Then we're gonna go in here. We're gonna have our mapper dot map. Then we're gonna have a list. And we might not even, I'm just gonna, uh, let me see here. I am actually, going to go down, let me see.
var Pokemon. So get Pokemons. Okay. So we're going to go. First thing, we got to bring in that Pokemon repository. Repository. So we're going to go var Pokemon repository dot get Pokemons dot where. And that is going to return. Let me see here. Then dot returns. We're going to see what this returns. And this is going to actually just return one Pokemon. So it's going to return. So get Pokemons. Let me see. I'm actually going to try and copy and paste all this in here. Maybe I can. Var Pokemon create. So the Pokemon DTO. And we're just going to call this Pokemon create. Trim end, and this is going to return just one Pokemon. So var, and we need to fake this. So Pokemon is equal to a dot fake, and it's going to be just right. It's returning just regular Pokemon. And I'm sorry, I get uh this one. I'm kind of just doing on the fly. Kind of really brazen to do this one just like on the fly like that, but we're here and I'm on the stream, so we're we're going. We are not stopping. Okay, so we're gonna go here. We've got our call to there. And now we need to actually do the, the map. So we're gonna go here. We're gonna go call two. Then we're gonna bring in mapper dot map and I'm actually just going to copy and paste this into here so the Pokemon create then we're going to pass in the Pokemon create and it's going to return a Pokemon so we're going to go return turns Pokemon Okay, and then we're gonna go Then we have to mock one more Dot call two and We're gonna go here we're gonna do the Pokemon repository dot create Pokemon Then we're gonna pass in a fake owner ID. We're gonna pass in a fake category ID Then we're going to pass in a fake Pokemon map. Let me see here. So we need to pass in a fake Pokemon. Or we need to pass in a fake Pokemon DT. Wait a second. No, that I'm looking at the wrong one. Yeah, we need to actually put we need to pass in a fake Pokemon into here. And then what it is returning, we need to figure out what it's returning. And it's actually returning returns Pokemon. Can't see what's going on.
and I think we're having a issue with what it's returning. When you get errors like that, it's usually because you it's not returning the right thing. So Pokemon. So Pokemon is not no. Pokemon map. Okay. Trying to all right, so we got create Pokemon. Got the owner ID. Got that. And got the Pokemon map. I'm actually gonna create another one. It could be that for Pokemon map is equal to a dot fake Pokemon. Pokemon map. Ah, okay. This is actually returning a bool. Okay. That is the issue. Okay, so whenever you get errors like that, be sure you're returning because I wasn't returning the right type. And the Pokemon map should still work, and it actually looks a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Whew! Okay, so let's go ahead. Let's make the controller. That was not a fun experience. <laughs> God. And I get nervous because I'll have to, if I mess it up too bad, like I'll have to remake the whole entire video, and it's just, man, when you have to remake a whole entire video, it's... It's not a good day. So hopefully this will work. So we're gonna go down here. Then we're gonna go act. So we need to figure out, so we're gonna go var result is equal to controller and create Pokemon. And we're gonna go owner ID, pass in those, category ID, then we're going to pass in, let me see, what is actually being, it's a po uh, Pokemon DTO. So we're going to go Pokemon create. That is going to be the result. And then we're going to assert and result that should be, let's do just a test to make sure it's not null and let's debug it and make sure that nothing else is being debugged. So we're going to step through it and we're going to debug it. And I pray to God this thing works. I have a good feeling though that it's going to work, please. So we're going to go down here, owner ID, we're going to create all those fakes. We're going to create our mocks. Current proxy generator cannot accept this method. Ascensions cannot be used because they are static. Okay. Uh, Bad news, we're not going to be able to actually create this. But we learned a valuable lesson. When you have a static method, you're not going to be able to unit test it. Um, what I'm going to have to do is, is maybe in another video, I will go back. In order to get this thing working, if you see that, uh, it's not necessarily it's a static method. It's, not, it's just that I'm not going to be able to do it live on the stream. If you want to be able to finish the rest of this, go in throw all of this into a repository actually i'm just gonna do it i'm just i'm just gonna do it uh pause the video go do it and then i'll be right back hold on okay i'm back and i went through and did the right thing i almost didn't do it but i was just like i, I can't leave you guys hanging like that so if you really admire my uh, dedication to you guys make sure to smash that like button but i went back and what i did is the way that you can get around the static method and this is this will be really handy when you guys actually start unit testing is you basically put this inside of a repository so prior we just had you know all that hanging out in the you know pokemon repository we had that little that nasty whatever extension method that was giving us you know can't fake a static method so what i did is i just wrapped it in a, a the uh the repository i just put it, just threw it in the repository so that we could still mock it and we could still actually go through it 
Um, so went through here and I did all of that like live on the stream too, like pretty much live. Like I, I literally just went back and did that. So uh, got to see real unit testing <laughs> in real time. You got to see me being frustrated and just thinking about what I'm going to do with my life. So anyway, we went through, went ahead, mocked it and it, it works now. Uh, and I'll show you the actual, so I just called it get Pokemon trim to upper and uh, it's going to go get the, it's actually returning one Pokemon. I threw it all in a repository. You can see it right there. And I literally just took the original get Pokemons and uh, put all those fluent interfaces on it and put it in that repository and our unit tests now work and we are ready to go. Anyway, the next video after that, we've that's pretty much it. If you can get through that create, that huge um, create Pokemon controller that we just did, you pretty much can probably unit test anything. Um, in the next video, we're going to be working on uh, uh, Entity Framework for Web API and testing Entity Framework. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Make sure to smash that like button if you haven't already. Make sure to smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.